is TechStrong TV. Hello and welcome to TechStrong TV. I'm Bonnie Schneider and today I'm thrilled to be speaking with Kim Ganelius, co-founder and CCO of Vern Global Finland. Kim is a sustainability leader in the industry, driving the marketing and international sales of Vern Global Finland's climate neutral certified data center services. He also oversaw green certification initiatives that helped Vern Global Finland achieve the first hyperscale level climate neutral certification for a Nordic data center. Kim, thank you so much for joining us on TechStrong TV. Thank you, my pleasure. Can you tell us more about your background and Vern Global Finland's sustainability journey? Absolutely, yeah, and um, it most definitely is a journey because when uh, when we were starting, uh, the priority certainly didn't seem so high, especially among, shall we say, clients and the in industry in general. So we started in 2011 under the brand of uh, FICO, so Finnish co-location. We were the first company to bring co-location to the Finnish market. At that time, just before, uh, Google had done a significant investment into Finland. So they actually did a 600 million investment uh, into a data center where they were using innovative technology for cooling. So they were using seawater. And we kind of uh, thought that uh, the sustainability really is something that we want to focus on. We felt strongly about it. So day one, we started to use um, green energy. And uh, uh, we were also uh, exploiting uh, the benefits we have in the Nordics of the cool climate. So uh, what we found was an underground network of tunnels where the temperature is always low. So this means for the data center industry that you need to use um, less energy for cooling. So it seemed like a, a fantastic idea to us. And we decided to use 100% uh, green energy from day one. So not only do you kind of save on the uh, amount of energy that you need to use, you also uh, get the benefit of having everything green. That's great. And I was wondering if you could talk about data centers in general, how they can leverage technology, um, because a lot of people are looking to reduce their carbon footprint and they may be concerned about data centers in general. Can you talk more about the um, the whole process of it and how it can make for a more sustainable business that turns to a green data center? Sure. Uh, so, so the three main areas uh, that are causing carbon emission are um, basically commissioning, so constructing the data center itself, and then operating, uh, keeping the sort of service going, and then decommissioning. So, so that means that once you're done with the services, maybe you, you, uh, you need to de demolish, uh, maybe you reuse the equipment. So all of these three areas are quite key to have more uh, green operations. So on the construction side, there's a lot of new technology coming out. Actually, in, in just the recent um, couple of years, there's been, for instance, green concrete coming out. So uh, this can be new technology where you uh, put in CO2 into the actual concrete, which means that there's uh, the overall sort of CO2 emissions are, are much lower. You can also reuse concrete. So, so use something from, a, from an existing building. Um, so on the operations side, by far the biggest uh, component is the actual green energy itself. So you want to be sure that uh, you are using a data center or a cloud service that is using 100% green. Now, in our case, for instance, it's 100% uh, wind. Um, this can uh, vary on the geo and the availability. Uh, and then on the operations side, there's also a lot of stuff that you can do, for instance, heat reuse. Um, so using the excess heat. In the future, on the operations side, uh, some trends that we're seeing with regard to technology is, for instance, green hydrogen. So uh, hydrogen has been available for a while, but producing it in a green, sustainable manner, that's uh, kind of just coming now. And uh, it's got its challenges both on the production side and uh, the actual, uh, 
shall we say, usage side. It's it's a complex ecosystem, but uh, that's that's something that's available on the or will soon be available on the operations side. Um, how do data centers balance the need for energy intensive computing with the goal of reducing their carbon emissions? Um, so. Um, in, in many cases, this can be a problem, especially with uh, old existing facilities, where um, a, a typical maximum for, for a rack uh, some, some years ago was, uh, say, using 10 kilowatts for that rack of uh, 40 or so units. Uh, now, what's happening is that uh, many of the providers are, are turning out servers that use much more power, much, much more power. So um, in the old data centers, uh, what you would need to do is build the whole backend to feed uh, the power into the racks and also build the cooling. Now, for instance, in our data center, we're quite ready for this. So it doesn't have to be a conflict. If, if you've got this high performance computing that's using a lot of power, uh, we can actually uh, cool all of that with free air cooling. So that's one of the benefits of the cool climate. And also the whole tech, um, the whole data center has been built so that you can have um, uh, different types of implementations in different areas of the data center. So you can have a classic sort of uh, uh, less uh, power intensive uh, racks in one area, and then you can have high performance um, computing using uh, high density in another area. And it's the same cooling so system. And because it kind of cools the whole data center in one go, um, it, it works well for such a uh, solution. What are some of the best practices for integrating renewable energy sources into data center operations? And how can cloud native and digital transformation technologies support this transition? Um, yeah, so so the, the number one thing, of course, for a data center is to ensure that everything is green. Now, there's a couple of ways that a data center can uh, acquire uh, green uh, power. Uh, so, for instance, you can use uh, guarantees of origin. So this means that you're buying from the grid and uh, the provider of uh, the green energy is guaranteeing that everything that you're buying is green. Now, um, the other way of doing this is uh, uh, a so-called PPA or a power purchase agreement. Now, um, there you actually go out to the supplier and you, you uh, commit to using something, say for instance, five megawatts over five years. Now, the challenge with that is that you actually have to commit to using it or then you will be paying for, for nothing. So um, there, there's, uh, you know, different uh, options and there's different kind of drawbacks uh, with the different options. Also, of course, what you can do is implement your own. So, so we have actually implemented, for instance, um, a solar power plant on top of our, one of our data centers. And, uh, you know, uh, up in the north where we are, it's pretty dark in the winter time, but in the summertime, that's when we may need uh, mostly the energy for cooling. It works very well for us. So even uh, a sustainable form of energy that doesn't produce evenly can work well in this environment, which is um, a really great benefit. What role can hyperscale solutions play in promoting sustainability in the data center industry, and how can they be leveraged to drive change? So uh, hyperscalers really play a key role in our industry because they are such huge players. So they really drive the demand for our services. So when a hyperscaler comes to us and says, you know, they would like to uh, purchase green uh, data center services, then that is really what drives us towards the green, right? And what drives the hyperscalers towards that is the demand towards them. So every, all of the um, all of the end user customers. And our response to that has been actually uh, getting a climate neutral certification. 
Uh, so that means that there's actually a third party uh, looking at our sort of um, greenhouse gas numbers. So, so uh, uh, doing this, um, the customer uh, can be sure that everything is climate neutral. And uh, that's, that's really uh, the way to go. Also for the hyperscalers, I'm hoping that they will be using um, third parties uh, to check their numbers and also to be more open to provide uh, the reporting to their end customers. For some hyperscalers already provide uh, information about um, you know, how green the, the services that um, the end users are using are in the end. How does Vern Global Finland measure and report its sustainability efforts and what metrics should tech workers be aware of when assessing a data center's environmental impact? Yeah. So um, along with using uh, a third party uh, climate neutral certifier, we have to provide extensive reporting. So we they they use the uh, greenhouse gas protocol, the GHG protocol, which is an international standard, and they actually look through all of our purchases more or less. So um, if we buy uh, equipment, uh, generators, UPSs, if we travel, uh, they take into account what way we travel. So so um, this is the way that we kind of get a focus on on being uh, sustainable in every sense and that's how the reporting is is done for our part so we do a full uh, open greenhouse gas report now uh, the second way that that we do reporting is to our new owners because we were acquired last year by um, a company called digital nine infrastructure which is um, a london based and listed on the london stock exchange now, Digital Nine's actual name comes from uh, the UN's sustainability goal number nine. That's why they're called D9. So they are focusing entirely on sustainable digital infrastructure. And because they're listed, they are requiring uh, a significant amount of additional reporting from us. So we're reporting this also uh, to our owners who are then publishing um, at least uh, significant parts of this as a report. And, and reporting really is key to the openness. So that's, that's the way that you can, um, the customers can compare providers. Well, we have one time for one more question. What is Vern Global Finland's vision for the future of sustainable data centers? Right, so, so our vision is that uh, we can go beyond being climate neutral to be climate positive. Now, how can we do that? How can you have a positive impact on the environment? So, so up until now, we've been focusing on the footprint. So the carbon emissions that are kind of um, caused by our activity. Now, we can also have a positive impact uh, for the stakeholders. For instance, with the heat reuse that we're using. So we're buying 100% green energy. We are feeding uh, the excess heat back to the district heating grid, which is using it to uh, heat houses, for instance. Now they have a certain footprint. And what we are providing with our reused green energy is a lower footprint for them. So we talk about a positive handprint. So that's, uh, that's one way. The other way we can uh, have a positive impact is um, to, uh, to tell our customers how to optimize uh, their software to use less energy. So these are a couple of examples. And of course, a positive impact can be, you know, telling people about uh, what we're doing. So telling the industry about the best practices. And this is also somewhere, something we are active in in um, in the different forums and uh, you know talking about these things, giving ideas, sharing ideas. There's a greener data movement where we're very active, where uh, we we tell people to do something small about uh, sustainability today, 
and then we give them lots of ideas, you know, what they can do. So keep a sort of mm -hmm. positive trend. Well, Kim Ganelia is co-founder and CCO of Vern Global Finland. Thank you so much for joining us on Tech Strong TV. We appreciate your insight and look forward to hearing more about Vern Global Finland in the future. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Great. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back on Tech Strong TV with more.